Welcomers to another episode of Technic Show. I'm your host, Major Sunil Shetty. NASCOM Andhra Pradesh in Telangana, in association with My Startup TV, brings you the Technic Show, a show that showcases inspiring stories, news, views. Uh, this story is broadcasted on the first and fifteenth of every month. Today, on our Technic Show, we have with us Mr. Somnath Marthi, the Vice President, Defence. Aerospace and Geoscience at IIC Technologies. IIC Technologies provides geospatial solution and services for the acquisition, manage for acquisition, management, integration, and dissemination of geospatial data. Welcome, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you for this opportunity. Sir, uh, geospatial, you know, is the next sunrise industry. Recently, we also saw how uh, India's first drone helped in delivering of medic uh, medicines beyond the visual range uh, and you know whether it is drones whether it is uh, self-driving cars whether it is gps they're all once a uh, common link for them is the geospatial technology and your company is into into this space uh, tell us about the company what is iac technology all about uh, iac technologies is uh, now about a 25 year old company uh, who have been in the uh, services from the beginning uh, to commence our map digitization and a few CAD services. And we slowly evolved and thereafter focused purely on geospatial sciences. Today, we actually provide solutions end-to-end -end on using GIS technologies on both la on land, on marine, and aeronautics. So when I say that we have uh, branched out into some unique offerings, and uh, I would proudly say we are an Indian grown, purely Indian grown multinational company because our uh, managing director, we, who came back from Carnegie Mellon in 93, we had a small tender for building the national cartographic database of our country, that is for Survey of India. And we won that against a stiff competition at that point in time. And we began our journey in 94 by actually uh, making quarter million scale maps for the National Viking Agency. The second bake we got was from our own Indian Navy in actually having to convert our portfolio of nautical charts into an electronic navigational chart database for India. And that put us on a pedestal of actually uh, on the marine globe today where we serve more than about over 20 navies globally. So we started moving up the value chain and uh, we thought we should have a niche in uh, what we are doing. And today we are known globally for our marine charting and related services. Uh, so uh, as a company, you know, which started, you know, when uh, the modern technology or even the mindset to allow a private sector into something which was seen as sensitive, you know, uh, was there. Uh, how, you know, what kind of challenges did you face uh, when you started off? As you uh, must have realized in today's uh, environment, where we are in the current state, the map policy has been liberalized where we have been out of the shackles of colonial era. The policies which were laid out during the British regime have still been continuing more or less still, it was completely uh, liberalized on 15th of February by our prime minister. Till then, for us to generate a product or acquire a data or make anything related to a spatial context, uh, we have to uh, go through a lot of uh, permissions, sanctions, clearances, etc., for providing that particular service. So, with the evolution of uh, technology and in the current age where we have 5G immersive technologies and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, 
I think geospatial technology today, as you have said rightly, is a huge sunrise industry which would, uh, you know, uh, serve uh, our nation and also the globe in a, in a huge way because it is an underlying technology for every aspect of life. It's an all-encompassing technology. It has been set aside as a supporting technology, I would say, till today. But I think it's going to come to a mainstream uh, offering where anything and everything, right from finance, banking, to any other services, would have a geospatial link or a context around it. That yeah. brings me to the next question. You know, it's very good to you know, uh, talk about drones, it's very good to talk about self-driving cars, which are, you know, probably will take a couple of decades more before we get to see here. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, GPS, okay, GPS become quite popular with, uh, uh, with logistic companies. As a company, as uh, IIC, uh, where are the areas do you use this? Or tell us about the in industries or areas that you work in, which directly impact or help uh, the common man. We have been uh, focusing largely on generating geospatial data, especially for countries outside of our country. We have uh, specialized in some areas. For example, we worked in a big way for the United States Department of Transportation, wherein we get data that is flown, for example, last evening the data comes in here and we actually generate some uh, outputs and products and send it back in a turnaround time specified by under our contract so from there on we have started to actually you know uh, learn the trade and at the same time realized that these technologies are very much uh, in direct uh, use for our country. And that is where about eight to 10 years ago, we have invested in having our own aircraft and sensors. We kind of went into a backward integration of actually starting to acquire data until the finished product. So today we have the entire gamut of service available right from uh, consulting with an organization to what they require to get in the finished product managing it, maintaining it, and updating it. Now, coming to your question of what segments we serve, uh, we work lastly, largely with mass, national mapping agencies. So base mapping is a huge offering of ours where we actually uh, map huge uh, areas of uh, terrestrial land mapping using aerial photography, using uh, technology called uh, LIDAR, uh, using ground uh, uh, acquisition uh, methods, conventional methods, aerial methods, and creating several products. We serve the infrastructure segment, especially focusing on highways, on uh, railroad, on irrigation, agriculture, and a few other uh, applications which actually uh, help uh, directly in uh, the economy. When you talk about geospatial uh, data, there are two types. You know, one is the static, one is the dynamic, and kind of weather patterns fit in fits into that. Uh, given the you know the impact of global warming that we are we are witnessing, what role will your company in particular and geospatial technology as such would is playing in it and would play going forward? So. The country is actually witnessing a lot of natural calamities and even otherwise. So having several forms of data in a, let's call, uh, for lack of better words, this data is geographical information. Now that is kind of made in such a manner where we are able to actually witness our past, forecast our future, understand the present and actually make a suitable geographic information that is readily available with layers of weather and other information coming from different sensors integrated in a particular way for us to be able to make the right short-time, mid-term, long-term predictions for 
helping us to you know avoid crisis support the disaster measures and the policies laid out by our country and such things have been are being uh, now deployed and such solutions are now uh, coming to the fore now in our country as a geospatial technology where do you see this going in next coming a decade uh, as a technology now and do you, do you see more and more uh, companies especially startups playing a role in it a very strong uh, area for a uh, startups to come into this for example the game changer is the drone technology which is coming in a huge way in uh, i would say complementing the other technologies that are available especially in the diversity of our country to be able to actually you bring in this technology today uh, there are schemes that have been launched even for land registry where drone technology is being thought of to actually play a major significant role in uh, doing land registry so fueling the data economy what is short in our country is data geographic information even today we don't have a, a high resolution or a large scale map of the entire country we probably have on a 25000 scale what we really need to have is at least something like a 5 to 10000 scale at the minimum now that itself is a huge opportunity but uh, thanks to the new policies i think there are major flagship programs being uh, conceived and i think uh, there is a strong role for startups and a strong role for technology to bring in uh, uh, what do you call it? ai ml and all these uh, technologies to the fore in uh, implementing uh, these uh, solutions as startups what kind of support they can get from you a little background on the geospatial technology by itself which is quite uh, i would say not a, a huge uh, barrier and i think there are many innovations that are coming to the fore from other technologies for them to be able to understand uh, the uh, the aspect of ge- geographic information for them to come in and for example any location based service they are able to actually supply chain amazon today as you brought out earlier delivering of medicines for example so this with their specialization being be able to uh, fly a drone with a particular payload the underlying technology for me to provide them the right geographic information tagged rightly with all the right attribute data and other uh, ancillary information for them to make a successful delivery in all these areas i think startups have, have already begun to play a major uh, uh, they are picking their own spaces there are lots of areas which they can come in with uh, a small uh, spark of an idea skill is a big challenge and as a company are you able to find uh, the right kind of talent uh, because your uh, industry is a sunrise industry uh, uh, very at the, at the very early stage and probably i don't know i'm just making a wild guess probably the uh, you know engineering colleges or the uh, or education institutions do not have may not have a course that directly fits into the kind of work you know or, or the or the kind of the skill required by a company like yours which are into geo uh, you know spatial technology is that right uh, my understanding and yeah, and if yes yeah your understanding is perfectly right this industry uh, needs i would seriously say it has a potential of generating a million jobs in the next decade or even uh, in a lesser period of time uh the right programs upskilling the base uh, uh graduation post graduation programs although they are out there uh, we have seen a huge gap from what is being taught today to what is actually required in the market so i see we have taken an initiative about 15 years ago we actually started an academy for skilling internally our own resources for example he comes from a survey uh, background we actually teach him to do a lot of things beyond what he has been taught and make him job ready 
Similarly, for uh, a graduate to be taught the science of photogrammetry, that is three-dimensional mapping, we take him on a, a program for about three months from any base degree he may have with arts and science, teach him the, uh, just like you're taught in the army, uh, the art of map making, its fundamentals, etc. all crashed into a three month program. And then he, we try and make him job ready. In the same uh, breadth, we have also trained a lot of our clients using the same infrastructure to upskill uh, them on their side. And uh, today we have the academy running programs, which are quite unique. We are probably one private company who are the only qualified uh, company who are able to teach them uh, marine surveys, hydrography, marine cartography. So all these kind of uh, skills that are required, yes, there needs to be a lot of upskilling that is required. But there is, I think, an equal uh, spread of uh, uh, available uh, institutions and new uh, academic programs that are being set up by several institutions who have uh, you know, thought GIS as a huge opportunity and uh, it's happening as we speak. That's good to hear. Uh, so finally, My Startup TV is a channel for startups and SMEs like yours. Uh, what are your thoughts? We carry your stories. We showcase a company like yours. What are your thoughts about a channel? I think it's a wonderful initiative, uh, Major Sunil, because I think we carry a very strong uh, message to the people who are looking for which way to go, right from higher secondary or from a degree or even otherwise. Uh, it, it, with what is there today, there is uh, so much of confusion uh, prevailing in the minds of uh, the young students on which way to nurture their career. And I think when you bring in different sectors and introduce them uh, to the potential of each of those sectors, what they can offer, I think it's a huge uh, platform for these young students and even decision makers too, for them to do the right things at the right time. And I think it's, it's a wonderful initiative. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you again on some of our panel talks. Certainly. Thank you so much and uh, all the best. And thank you for providing IAC this opportunity. Thank you.